Hi, welcome to lesson 17 in our Bootstrap Algebra course. Today we're going to talk about the distance formula. So you should be set up with, let's go to Bootstrap Algebra. Latest version. Let's look where we were last time. Last time we talked about player animation. You learned about the cond piecewise function in Wii Scheme, and we use that to um, change our player to be able to, our uh, danger and our target to be able to um, have some behavior when they uh, approach the edge of the screen. So you might have chosen to uh, stop them when they got to the edge of the screen. You might have chosen to loop them around. You might have chosen to teleport them someplace else. So um, hopefully you added some behavior to your danger and target uh, using the con function. So that's what you did so and uh, update player you can make the player we can make the player move up and down depending on um, up and down keys being pressed and we played with some other keys that we could use so um, remember that and if you need to go back and work on your um, game some you can right now today we're going to look at a practical application of something that you probably already learned about in algebra class or geometry class um, called the Pythagorean theorem and that's just named after the person who um, discovered this a long long time ago it's, it, it's somebody named Pythagoras so don't let that um, uh, add extra confusion or anything it's just how we are going to figure out how uh, far apart to points are on the screen so we can tell if our player collided. So what's missing from this, your game? Well, right now um, you saw that um, when your player hits the uh, danger, nothing bad happens. You don't lose a score. You don't die. Um, like in the Ninja Cat day game, if you remember when uh, Ninja Cat hits the, the dog image, then um, the game is over. Uh, when Ninja Cat hits the ruby, then the game, then uh, you get points. So it could be good things happen uh, when uh, images collide. It could be bad. Um, so let's go down to our game file. You already should be logged into Wii Scheme. Go ahead and stop right now if you're not. I'm going to open up my game file, and you can pause and open up yours. There's a function down here we haven't looked at. In section four, collisions, I'm going to open my screen a little bit. So collisions talks about when players are close enough, and we can decide what close enough means, if you're the programmer, um, to know how far apart things are. So uh, right now, yours looks like that. It has nothing in for this distances color function. And uh, there's nothing special about the stars in the name. So distance is color. I'm going to put in red in mine. And let's see what happens. I'm going to hit run. I think my only behavior for my player is up and down. And as we see, we have legs of a triangle. Here's the distance up. Here's the distance uh, left to right. Um, I have not added new behavior to my player, so they're going to keep going forever and ever. And, and actually, it's gone off the screen. We can't even see how far that distance is. But look, they're going just left and right, so their up and down distances are no longer changing. I'm going to start over. Hit run again. And we can see. Now, here's this x distance changing. It's changing, 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 going higher. Here's the x distance changing, going higher, 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 and higher. Now, why isn't this distance changing? We'll look one more time, and let's look at the diagonal distance. It's just says 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, which is not true, right? This line is getting longer the longer my game goes on. So that's what we're going to look at today is how does that diagonal distance actually change? 
All right, so now you can uh, stop if you want to. Do that in your game. Change just that. This uh, collide. Where was collide? No, distance is color, and the collision is section. Change it to whatever color you want, and in your game, um, you should see uh, those triangles from every different um, object on the screen change. Those numbers change. All right, so let's think about distance in one dimension, either left and right or up and down. So there's our danger dog. Here's ninja cat. They are a certain distance away from each other. Here's a little number line for reference that starts at zero, goes to a thousand in this case. Ninja cat's center is about at 240. Danger dog's center is about 630, 640, something like that, right? All right. All right, and so there's a distance. Let's say they put them at 200 and 600. There's a distance between 200 and 600. And we could write that in um, we scheme as the difference between 600 and 200. Of course, we get 400. And um, they've named one of them CX, so how far it is from this origin X. And another one of them, PX, which could be player and character, right? The player is here at 600, or sorry, the character is 600, and the player is at 200. If we want a positive distance, then the bigger one has to come first, right? Before you learned about negative numbers, when you were um, in elementary school, then... Um, uh, we, we we said the bigger one has to come first, and you learned about negative numbers, and, and then it, the, the order uh, matters, and we learned about negative numbers. But in distance, if we want to know how far away something is, it's always positive numbers, right? The bigger number comes first if we want to get a positive answer out. And that's really all this is showing is distance is relative that way where you could look at it from either direction. Right, you can look at it um, from the uh, dog's perspective or the cat's perspective, and the distance doesn't change. The distance is the same. The order changes to be one bigger than the other. Okay, so now we can look at something in our game, and you can look in your game if you want to. I'll show you. It's here. Here's something called line length, but we have it on this slide. I remember when I said we get the same answer if the distance um, for distance. So here we have two example points, 20 and 10, and we know that should be 10 apart. And the whole point of this function is it doesn't matter which one goes first. 20 to 10 is 10 apart. 10 to 20 is 10 apart. So how do we do that? Well, first we check to see which one's bigger. So we get in an A and a B. We check to see which one's bigger. If A is bigger, well, so A is already bigger, so it's already in the right order, and we just say A minus B. So that's this case. All right, let's look. If we get 20 and 10 for A and B, is 20 bigger than 10? Yes. So this cond part is true, which means this part gets executed. We say 20 minus 10 is 10. All right, if we get this other example, 10, 20 for A and B, all right, is... 10 bigger than 20? No. So this is false, so this never gets executed. We do the else part. We know we're down in the else. And um, B is bigger, 20 is bigger. So we say 20 minus 10. So we get 10 for both of the answers, whichever way we choose, because we, the programmer, put them in the correct order first. That's all this is showing. All right, so stop right now just for a second and um, talk to your partner. Make sure you answer these questions, what this function does, and you can go and look at it here on your in your game, the line link function. What does it do? How does it work? And why is there a conditional in it? Why is that con function in it? So stop for just a second and talk to your partner about that. Okay, good. 
So, line length computes the positive distance between two points on a single number line. If the two coordinates differ by their x values, this will tell us how far apart they are. That does their y values. It tells us how far apart their y's are. So let's go back. I'm going to run my game again, and we'll think about that. So here's the x distance. That's changing. Every time this moves, it causes the line length and tells the difference. The y is not changing, right? The distance here is not changing. So it gets the same answer. Every time it asks, it always gets the same answer. And that's all it does. Let's look at one other thing. We notice as this gets closer and closer to zero, is it going to go to a negative distance? No. It just hits the other part of the cond and still has a positive distance between the uh, x-coordinate for the player and the x-coordinate for the object. All right, but what if both things are changing? One more run. This line right here, length, is actually changing, right? As this moves, as this triangle moves, this line is getting longer and longer and longer every time, but how much? And that's what the uh, two dimension, both X and Y are changing. How much is that diagonal changing? So let's think about that. If we drew a straight line between two points, right? So think about, you can have a circle around a point, a circle around a point, of, and how is that radius? Um, the circles touch when the sum of the radii is less than the distance. Let's see if they show us that. Yeah. So we think about if we want to say they collide, these two po points collide, or these two images collide, we can think about these circles. And if they get shorter and shorter distance between them, when they touch, then we'll call that collision. Well, when do they touch? Well, here's the radius of red. Here's the radius of um, blue. They touch when their sum, so this little red radius plus the blue radius, is less than the distance. So if we knew the distance between the center of the blue circle and the center of red circle. So we know length C. And we know, or we can figure out, the length of the blue radius and the length of the red radius. When those uh, are equal, then they're touching. When they are a little less, then they've collided. All right, so let's watch this video should be recording the sound from there. The Pythagorean Theorem. Last time we asked the following question. If your character spawns on an infinitely large sheet of graph paper, then moves A boxes to the right and B boxes upwards, then how far is she from her starting point? We can picture her standing at the top of a ramp, a box is long and B box is high, with the bottom of the ramp right at her spawn point. In our flat video game universe, this ramp looks like a triangle. It's a right triangle, in fact, which means that one of its corners looks just like the corner of a square. We know the lengths of the two shorter sides, call them A and B, and we want to find the length of the longer, slantier side, call that C. To puzzle this out, we can use a trick available to mathematicians and game designers alike. We can make copies of the triangle, play with them, and see what happens. The triangle has a square corner, so we could try making four of these triangles, and then see if we can somehow put them together to make a square. Hmm. This is a pretty nice square. We've made two squares, actually. There's a nice big square on the outside, and a smaller, slanty square hole in the middle. Let's just fill that hole in. What's the area of that smaller square? Well, its sides are the same length as the long side of the triangle. Remember, we decided to call that number c. So its area is c times c, or c squared. Of course, we don't know what c is yet, it's what we're trying to find out, but we can make statements about it anyway. 
This picture gives us another way of describing the smaller square, though. We can think of it as a piece of the larger square, a piece that you get by cutting off the four triangles. So the area of the small square must be equal to the area of the big square minus the total area of the triangles. What's the area of the big square? Well, its sides are length a plus b, so its area must be a plus b times a plus b. So let's see, that's a squared plus a times b plus b times a plus b squared. Well, let's simplify that a little bit. It's a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Well, what about the area of the four triangles? Well, here's a sneaky trick you can do with right triangles. If you fit two copies together, you can get a rectangle with area a times b, or ab. In this case, we have four triangles, so we can make two rectangles with a total area of 2ab. So here's the equation we found so far. c squared equals a squared plus 2ab plus b squared minus 2ab. 2ab minus 2ab is just zero, so we can drop that part. And here's what we have left. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We've just shown that this rule is true for all right triangles. This is called the Pythagorean theorem, and we can use it to find the distance between any two points on our infinite piece of graph paper. For example, if we start at the origin, move four boxes to the right, and then three boxes upwards, then how far are we from the starting point? Well, in this case, a is equal to 4, b is equal to 3, and c is the number we're trying to find. Since a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we know that c squared is equal to 4 times 4 plus 3 times 3. That's 16 plus 9. That's 25. So c squared is equal to 25, and that means c must be 5. And that's the answer. We've gone 5 units from the origin. What if you're not starting at the origin, though? What if you're trying to find the distance between two random points on the plane? Let's call them x1, y1, and x2, y2, perhaps. How can you use the Pythagorean theorem to find that distance? See if you can figure it out. All right, that's going to be what we're going to find out for our uh, distance formula function. All right, let's look at page 54 in our workbook. Let's see, which I want to do the other way. Let's see, I'm going to leave that open there, and I'm going to go to here, 54. The distance between x1, and remember why we're calling it x1 and x2, because they're going to be um, points on a grid. Let's find a nice grid, All right? So we'll say x1, All right? We're just going to call one of these guys x1, x2, y1, and y2. We have two points, x and y. We're going to call them x1, x2, and y1, y2. So we already have something that gives the distance between two points, right? This looks, we already have one that gets the distance on, on between two x's or two y's. Remember our line length function here doesn't care. It doesn't care whether you're an x or a y. As long as you're in one dimension, it's going to give the distance. So we can use that in our formula. So let's say our player is at 0, 2, and 4, 5. Right? So this is going to be x1. This is going to be y1. 4 is going to be x2. 5 is going to be y2. Right? So if we have multiple things, we'll just call them x and y, x and y x1, y1, x2, y2. What's the distance between them? 
So we see where those plug in. Here's x1. It goes in the formula here. What's next? x2. x2 goes in the formula here. y1 goes in the formula here. And y2, we see from here, goes in the formula here. So this is all just matching up. Now, I want you to pause for just a second and translate this into circles of evaluation. So go ahead and pause right now. And on your whiteboard or on your paper, um, go ahead and translate this specific version of the formula into circle of evaluation. Remember, this outside part is the square root. Um, so yeah, go ahead and do that. Good. Hopefully you have a circle of evaluation for that. All right. Now, in your game, fix the distance function. Here's the distance function, and it's not, uh, they don't say it specifically, but let's run this again. See how this hypotenuse, the, the, the long, the uh, diagonal line is always zero? I think that's probably because it always says zero here. I'm going to change this to just seven, and I bet it always says seven. Yeah, see, seven, 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 seven. seven. So let's walk through um, this uh, distance function because I want to tell you something really, it's going to make this video pretty long, but I want to tell you something really important about uh, the examples as we work through these. So we will do this together instead of leaving that for homework. Okay? Because your homework will be... Um, talking about collision. But let's go ahead and do this distance formula. So we want to turn this into uh, your circles of evaluation into a formula. And I'm going to do it with this examples of 0, 2, and 4, 5. And what I do a lot for that kind of stuff is I just put in a comment over here where I'm going to run and I'll just write it 0, 2, and 4, 5. And this isn't we scheme code, right? These are my two example points in algebra notation, 0, 2, and 4, 5. And I can even hit enter and nothing happens because it's a comment. And we had in our first circle of evaluation line length of 0, 4. All right, so let's go how line length works A and B. So line length 0, 4. Oops. 0, 4. And 4, and that makes sense. And we have line length 4, 5. All right, so that's two things that you had in the inside of our circle of evaluation. And then we had a bigger circle just around one side, right? Because we got to do the square first. And we seem that's easy to see in algebra notation. We got to use our uh, evaluation pyramid to remember that exponents go, are going to go first. So squared, do we have a square function? Uh, we do. Uh, so we can say square. And there's really nothing else in that circle, right? I mean, that's all that circle does is take one of these functions, copy, paste. All right, let's see. If this was 4 that came out of line length, I know that 4 squared is 16. Square expects three arguments, but one given. Oh, square. Oh, sorry. Um, that is going to draw a square. Um, so 
Let's see, is there an SQ? No, okay, so square was not the function I thought it was. Um, so I think we're going to just need to, we can either define our own or we know square means a func uh, the output times an output. So we can do times paste. Oops. Start that over. Open times paste. It's not pasting where I want to. Let's grab that again. Copy. Paste. Okay, that worked. I don't know what I was doing before. Space. Paste. All right, so now it looks more like a circle evaluation, right? I have that times that. And we think it should be 16. Yep. All right, and let's just test our other one. What is one times one? Well, it's one. So let's make sure that times, I paste it in this second function, paste twice equals one. All right, so that's gonna be another part. Now we just did this and this. What's the next thing we need to do? We need to do a plus. So let me build this up still one at a time. So I'm going to say plus, that's the outside of my circle. And I'm going to take this whole thing. Copy, paste, space. And I'm going to take my second one. Copy, paste, paste. That's why I have to be, you know, I, I, I have a system uh, to be really precise about the order, the which way I do, so I, so I know where things are because it gets a little hard to look at soon. All right, is that um, 16 plus 1? It is not 16 plus 1. Is there something wrong with this? Yes, I did not grab the right, let's say 0, 4, 0, 4. I think I got one too many in, don't I? I'm going to bring this over a little bit. And this is probably the kind of stuff that you have. It makes it hard to see. But you know what? One thing that will help us is, I believe, we can hit enter after, um, if we don't have a complete function over here, and it'll help us make new lines. So I'm going to do that again. All right, where's my first one? Here is my first function. I'm going to copy that. All right, and I'm going to say plus and then I want to add just one other thing. Oh, no, it, it went ahead and put that in there. All right, can't do that. All right, let's do a real precise from the beginning again. Oh, I think I, okay, I pasted, you probably already saw this. I pasted the second part twice. I'm going to do plus. Copy the first part. Paste one time, space. Copy the second part. Paste one time. That is better. And it is 17. And that's what I would expect from 4 squared, which is 16, plus 1 squared, which is 1. 17. Great. And it's probably off the screen for you to see. So I need to make that better sized. I don't know, you get your screens messed up too. In fact, I'm going to. Okay, there it is. Good. Okay, now, okay, so this was a test, right? That's 17. So that was the circle of evaluation of everything except the square root. Do I have a square root function? I do. Let's test that with 16. If I put in 16, I should get 4. And uh, square root, 
SQRT 16, I get 4. All right, what if I get 17? SQRT 17 is going to be a little more than 4, right? It is barely more than 4. And we also remember from algebra that if it's not a, um, for an integer, if it's not an integer, this really is a, um, an, a, 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 a rational number that cannot be, I mean, sorry, a um, irrational number that this is just an approximation for. So that's one thing I want to get to is how can we do examples for this new function? Even if this is right, I, mean, I could, could copy and paste that and make this an example, but there's a cooler way to do examples. So first, let's get this example. Um, now, let's go ahead and look up examples. So, still working on this distance. And in fact, we can bring up another sheet, which is the word problem distance. And you can start filling it in with um, the things that we talked about. I'll give you a chance to do that in a second. But we're doing this distance formula, and we're working through examples where we take um, our domain is going to be four inputs, right? The player X, the player Y, character X, and character Y. And from our examples, that's what we've been experimenting with is two points that have X and a Y. Go back up to the top. They're right here where's our, where are our examples. But when we got down here, and those were the examples they gave us in our um, circles of evaluation. We have this irrational number approximation as uh, the example, and that would be this going to be make, make our tests really hard. But there's something called Pythagorean triples. Let's open up our another browser. Go to Google or DuckDuckGo. And uh, so, remember I told you that the name of the person who started, first wrote this uh, truth about triangles down was named Pythagoras. And so, there are some special numbers that give us whole number answers for triangles. Pythagorean, T-R-I-P-L-E-S. And most people know a couple of those. Some super famous ones are 3, 4, and 5. And let's figure out why that is true. Well, what is 3 squared? 3 is 3 is 9. What's 4 squared? 4 is 4. Is 16. What is 9 plus 16 plus 9? 16. And what is 25? Does that ring a bell? Square root of 25 is 5. So there are there's a triangle that has one side of 3, one side of 4, and a hypotenuse, that long part. Uh, is a Greek word, because that, that person was Greek, called hypotenuse. It's another thing you can Google. Hypotenuse. Right? So that's just that long part of the triangle. I'm just going to get back to my whiskey. All right. And this is an example where we get actual whole numbers. So I'm going to take my entire working correct. Let's say I wish we never did a whole working one because we did square root of 17 and got this uh, irrational number. So let's go ahead and do this. I copy that. And we know we should get 25, right, if we put these new points in. And we're going to use 3 and 4. Um, uh, we'd need to get a, um, 
we get points that give that, right? Because we're talking just about this outside part of the triangle. So we'll just make them up. That's great. Then we so something we do all the time is make up examples. And let's see. Let's just work backwards. I'm going to undo that for a second. We know that we want to get this part where the times is to be 3. So we want a line length of 3. We already have one with a line length of 4 because we said 0 and 4. So we know that we could do line length of 0 and 3 and get a 3, right? All right, so that's going to be one of our points. It's going to be 0, 3. Point notation 0, 3. All right, and what do we want for our other point? Well, this was 1, but we want it to be 4 for the other side. So let's do line length of... Instead of 4 and 5, let's do 4, and we want to get uh, 4 out, so that would be 8, right? 4. Right now, we have two points. Zero, three, and four, eight, that we know are going to give us um, five for the distance formula. So I'm going to copy this whole. One of the examples that we know, uh, let's say, oops. Let's see, this is the plus side. Where are we in the distance formula? Uh, got that open somewhere. You probably have it on a piece of paper. It's easier to see, right? All right, so we want line length uh, squared, and then the plus, and then the um, square root. Uh, and this just ends with the plus part, right? So. That means with the plus part, we should get 25. So we're still doing this part of the circle of evaluation. I'm going to paste that in, but I'm going to change it to my two new coordinates. So instead of 0, 4, 0, 4, I want 0, 3, and 0, 3. And instead of 4 and 5, I want 4 and 8, and 4 and 8. And we expect to get 25 and we did so now the only thing we have left to go to get our perfect example is square root so I'm going to do open sqrt space I'm going to take my entire section here copy paste and I got five that means this is a perfect example of the Pythagorean triple three four and five where three is what I get from the line length formula for one side four is what I get from the line length formula from the other side and five is what I get from the entire distance formula so that's an example so I'm going to copy that whole example uh, yeah 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 and let's think about now, I'm, so I'm not going to copy it yet. Let's think about now when we go down to our distance here, what my examples look like. Open, you see I'm over here, example, and I'm going to say distance of 0, 3, 4, Eight. Let's see if that's the right order for our inputs. 
two numbers, the distance between two points on the screen, we have the players X and Y, the players, how far apart are they? Uh, let's look back at the word problem. CX, CY, okay, good. Um, you know, with, with, with the, the four inputs like that, I wasn't sure what order we wanted to be in, but it looks like the order is player X and Y and character X and Y. So we have player X and Y is 0, 3, character X and Y is 4, 8, and we know that should be 25. Now, we always need a few examples. Let's do another one. Example. Distance. Now, we need another Pythagorean triple. So I'm going to go back to where I was looking up Pythagorean triples. Do I still have that open? Here. All right. Let's see if Wikipedia gives us a few. Yes, here's a bunch of them. So the only other one I knew uh, from memory is 5, 12, and 13. So I can take those examples that I had, and I need to make them 5, 12, and 13. I'll just note it over here. 5, 12, 13. Those are distances, right? So I need, for my example, something that gives 5. And there's no reason to make it too hard. I already have this one player point that starts at the origin, so I know it's easy to say 0 and 5. I just do that off the top of my head. I know that gives 5. All right, what gives 12? Well, let's just start this same same one, 4. And I get 12. Well, I do 12 plus 4, so that's 16. Hopefully that made sense. And then we know the answer. We want to be 13. So hopefully you saw that, how I turned, you know, I just knew that out of my first point, I want the distance of five. First point, so I wanted the distance of five, and so I just made, I know that five minus zero is five. Second point, I wanted the distance of 12, so I just need two, tumber, two numbers that are 12 apart. Doesn't matter what they are, I picked four as the starting place, I added 12 and got 16. And in fact, we can check that. We're going to use line length of 4 and 16. I would expect to get 12, and I did. Now, all right, now we can see, all right, hmm. You know what? I did those off the top of my head because this is a little different than the examples we used before because um, this takes four inputs. But we use line length here. So we can't just copy this and make it, um, you know, copy these examples. They won't give us quite the, the right shape for our function. We know we need to use line length. So we can copy this full example over here that we use as a good starting point for our function. So I'm just copying this last one we did that with the 0, 3, and 4, 8 example into right before the last part of that. All right, and let's see. In fact, I should be able to run that now. I will always get um, 5 out right so I'm gonna run that and see how it says five 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 always five so that's good and I failed you can click on this line I failed that example and that example ah you probably saw this is wrong anyway good so this helped me debug my example because this distance of a 3, 4, 5 triangle is not 25, it's 5. So I would have expected to fail uh, this example because this is not a um, 5, 12, 13 triangle. 
So, um, but uh, I expected to pass this one, and I didn't because I had the wrong value in there, which you've probably been yelling at the video about. All right, now, this one only works for these two points, 0, 3, and 4, 8. So, and they gave us in the word problem some things we can use, where's the word problem, as variables. Player X, player Y, character X, character Y. So we can say, the oh, and they gave it to them here in what the, the, our example here. So what's PX? Well, PX is going to be the first thing, zero. So I'm going to change my zeros to PX, PX, PX. What's PY? PY, oh, PY. PY. So I expect to have the first part done. And now my editor really helps me out. All right, my plus is going to be two things. There's my first thing. I can actually hit enter here and see how it lines them up. And that really helps. And in fact, I can put these extra spaces in because we seem doesn't care about extra spaces. I can line everything up so that everything is underneath. And now I can see clearly where I need to put my CX. See why that changed the spacing a little. CX. Nope. Yes, yeah, CX. CY. That's done. And I can I can go use my arrow key and go through these last parentheses to make sure they all line up. Alright, I expect that to that. That closes the plus. I'm gonna go write one more. That closes that uh, square root, and I'm going to go write one more. That closes my define, so that is my full function. If I had an extra one, it would turn it red. If I have one too few, it won't know because it won't be able to see it yet, but I'll get an error. So when I hit paren one more time, it matches it up. Now I would expect all my examples to pass, and... I expect my distance to keep changing because now this is a general function. It doesn't just do the example. So when I run the game, I should actually see the hypotenuse, that diagonal change. So let's see if we see all those things. Here it getting smaller, smaller, smaller. I'm just watching this yellow diagonal. And it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That looks right. Did all my examples pass? My examples both passed. Um, we could even put in a Pythagorean triple we've never seen before. 12, 35, 37. 12, 35, 37. Do one more. Copy. Paste. Well, I can make a 12 by putting 12 here. I need to look at that again. I should have written it down. Here's what I normally would do. Copy. It, the computer doesn't care that we use one semicolon or two semicolons for a comment. I just I have it used to. All right, 1235 and 27. So uh, that was 12. I need to get 35 from these last two. I'm still going to start it at 4. And let's see if I say minus 35, 4, 31. Is that the way I want to do that? No, I'm going to plus it. Sorry, plus 35 and 4, 39. And the great thing is, it will tell us, the, the example, you know, the computer will tell us if we fail the example and there's nothing bad about it, we just fix it. And that should be 37, right? So if we get nothing back, that means we did it right. Test it. No, no errors show. We're still getting changes in this diagonal number. Yep, our example passed, so that means this was correct. So there's distance. Yours should look like that. Um, now, your homework is, all right, what is close enough? So... Um, this doesn't tell us, right? This is saying collide, whatever collide does, whenever it's called, 
right? It's going to return a Boolean. We named it with a question mark. It's going to take in those four numbers, which we're going to have to pass to distance. So that's that, you know, you're going to use somewhere in your function a distance call. That's what, you know, we call it when we say I'm going to get the result of applying the distance function to these four numbers. So I'm going to have a number, and it's going to, I'm going to have a distance, and it's going to be a number. Uh, because that's what comes out of distance. And I need to do a Boolean, so I need to do a comparison. But you decide how far apart it is when they collide. And you'll have to look, do some experiments with yours, and look and see, well, here's the number we're talking about. And that's in the hundreds, right? Ooh, that one got really close, though, right? In fact, those actually touched. So they went to a very small number. Um, but how much is collide? Uh, remember, it's going to be the center of the image. So um, let's start mine over. Do they collide only when they're center? See, those centers never touched for those gr that green. I'll run it again. But did they get close enough that we want to call that collide? And that's something for you to decide. You can you can do this with yours, which. You know, you can move them around, if, and then hopefully yours wrap around a little better than mine. You don't have to keep starting it over, and you can see the effect of that. But I can go down and say, okay, when does collide? Does it have to be 1 or 0? You're probably going to not get 0. But is 5 close enough, 10 close enough, 100 close enough? You can make whatever you want to be close enough because you decide what collide means. And it's going to be the difference between the distance you get out of the distance formula and some number that you provide. So you make the collide function um, so that um, it returns true sometime when two uh, characters are close enough that you get collide. And um, then you can put some examples in to determine if those examples uh, collided or not. So that's your homework for next time.